I promised you a long time ago this would eventually happen, and we have arrived. This is a big one, everybody. Assault rifles are the most popular weapon type in COD history, and this is the most requested ranking list we've ever done, and the most put off, because let's be real, there's 127 assault rifles, but it is time. We are going to start the journey of ranking every single assault rifle, 127 of them in COD history, from worst to best. Now, before anyone says anything, there aren't going to be very many World War II era guns on this list because most of those technically aren't assault rifles. After all, it was the 40s and that kind of weapon was really new. So you let me know which is your favorite. Drop a like, please guys. Show some love. Turn on those notifications. Make sure you're subscribed or following the page. This is the biggest ranking video we have ever done. So let's kick this off. At 127, dead last in COD history, the COD 4... M14. This is one of the worst semi-auto guns in, in the entire franchise. Let's be real. It was awkward. Yes, it could kill in two bullets basically no matter what, but the, the handling, it was, it was bad. Aside from the god-awful iron sights, it had some really high recoil. It made hitting your second shot super, super difficult to do. Plus, when you put the M14 next to the G3, there was no reason to use it, ever. The G3 was better in every single way. The M14, it sucked. It's dead last. At number 126, the Modern Warfare 3 M16A4. Now, much like the M4 in this game, it had been heavily nerfed and it turned into a starter weapon, meaning it was viable, I guess, but also designed to be way weaker than everything else, so you would have motivation to grind and keep leveling up. The Modern Warfare 3 M16 was slow. It was bouncy. It was unreliable. One burst kills weren't very common as an occurrence with the gun, and that kind of defeats the purpose of the gun. It was entirely outclassed by the other burst weapon in the game, which we'll talk about later. It was just an unimpressive gun all the way around. At number 125, the Advanced Warfare MK14. Now, uh, the MK14 is usually a very high damage rifle, but in AW, Sledgehammer decided to go against the grain for some reason. I don't know why. It hits for a pathetic 33 base damage, making it a four-shot kill by default. Now, if you hit a headshot, the damage can jump up in the 70s, but... That made it more of a precision weapon than an assault rifle, and if you weren't hitting constant headshots in a game where everybody is obviously jumping to the moon, the MK14 was awful. I mean, it's easily one of the worst semi-auto rifles in COD history, and understand, we are ranking from the worst to the best, and we are only going to go off their current state. We are not going off their launch state, we are going off their current status. At number 124, the Modern Warfare 2019 Odin. Now, I want to like the Odin. I like the name. I know you probably do too, but it's just not good for standard multiplayer. We are also going off multiplayer, not Warzone, okay? Extremely slow firing gun with very high damage, but the handling was so bad, and with how fast Modern Warfare can play sometimes, the Odin is a liability more than anything. And remember, we're only talking about standard multiplayer in this video, not Warzone. In regular Modern Warfare multiplayer, the Odin was awful. At number 123 today, the Advanced Warfare AE-4. Released as part of the Havoc DLC pack, it was an energy assault rifle that was very consistent with its damage. It dealt 34 base up close and then decreased down by only 4 points to an even 30. That's pretty good. But it fired at 500 rounds per minute. And since it was an energy weapon, it had no cover penetration at all. So yes, it was strong. And yes, it was accurate. But the super low fire rate, well, and the lack of cover penetration, it killed it. I barely remember seeing anybody use it after the coolness factor wore off. At number 126, no, 122, sorry, the Advanced Warfare M16. Lots of Advanced Warfare <laughs> guns on this, this lower end. Easily one of the worst rifles in COD history. It was awkward, it was inconsistent, it got dumped in a game where burst weapons had to be melt machines or else they weren't viable. I mean, when people are bunny jumping everywhere, a burst weapon isn't going to be able to keep up with the full autos unless it has some ridiculous range, which the M16 did not. Plus... These are potentially the worst iron sights in all of Call of Duty, even after the buffs. I mean, it was bad, and I have no problem putting it this far down the list. At number 121, the Black Ops 3 KVK 99M. It was a remake of the fan favorite AN94, and I'll tell you right now, they didn't hit, they didn't, they didn't knock it out of the park. The Black Ops 3 version got a hefty damage nerf, and the fire rate feels slower than it should have. I mean, it has got to be one of the most underwhelming DLC weapons ever and one of the most underwhelming remakes. I mean, how do you go from the Black Ops 2 AN94 to this thing? It, it was not a success. At number 120 today, the Advanced Warfare M1 
Grand. It's almost identical to the MK14, but with one minor change to the damage multipliers. This thing only deals 34 base damage, but if you hit the upper torso, you can get a headshot bonus, which made it a lot easier to get two-shot kills. However, that comes at the cost of lower ammo capacity. There's only eight rounds in this thing, and you cannot do anything to increase that number. It was a lot better than the MK14, but it had enough drawbacks, and if you're not aiming high, it was just another hit marker machine. Hence, why it's at number 120 today. At number 119, the Advanced Warfare Lever Action. Now, this was weird. It was a weird gun. It was a semi-automatic rifle that maxed out at 631 rounds per minute. You weren't guaranteed a two-shot kill like most other semi-autos. Plus, it held eight rounds. There was no way to increase it, which you could get in trouble with. I guess it was better than the MK14, but that's not saying a lot. It was pretty low tier in the grand scheme of things, and a lever action rifle in advanced warfare. I don't really understand it, but it is what it is. At number 118 today, the Modern Warfare 2 F2000. I love dumping on this gun because there's a handful of people ready to jump and defend it every time. You're probably going to be pretty salty when you see where it ranked. It was a very low damage assault rifle. It killed him four to five bullets most of the time. Fired at 900 rounds per minute. It was the fastest in the game. That's cool, but the recoil was dumb. The iron sights, they were terrible. You'd have plenty of time to think about that during all the reloading you had to do, despite its problems. Yes, a lot of people insist the F2000 is underrated. Am I one of those people? No, that's why it's down here. The gun was no good. At number 117 today, the Black Ops 2 SMR, a gun that I truly do not understand. Semi-auto rifle, consistent two-shot kill, but low fire rate cap that gave it a worse time to kill than the FAL. I mean, the FAL had a better fire rate cap, two-shot kill, handling was identical to the SMR. So here's the important question. What reason was there to use the SMR when you could just use the FAL? There wasn't. It was pointless. At number 116 today, the Advanced Warfare AK-47. This may be the worst AK in COD history. You let me know. It's possible. It killed in three shots up close, four at range, but fires at an abysmal 615 rounds per minute, which gave it one of the worst times to kill of any automatic in the game. The recoil was so high in this one, it was. The range dropped off into the 20s. It just wasn't a good choice, and it wasn't a good representation of the AK, which is a legendary Call of Duty gun. At number 115, I can't wait to see people get upset about this one as well. The Modern Warfare 3 Fat. Now, I know some of you love the gun. I didn't. It really wasn't that good. It was a final unlock, which is just not worth the grind. Yes, it fired at 1,000 rounds per minute, but it also needed a minimum of four shots to kill, and that recoil, well, it was not forgiving. Plus, the magazine was only 30 rounds, and the reload time was three and a half seconds, so if you weren't running sleight of hand, you were in trouble. It was like the F2000 for Modern Warfare 2. A late unlock, it was fast, but it was weak, and people always insisted that it was better than it actually was. At number 114 today, the Infinite Warfare Type 2, the assault rifle that can be split in half and used in a Kimbo. That's awesome. Cool idea in practice, but, well, cool idea, but in practice, it didn't really have a place. In assault rifle mode, it was weak. It was bouncy. It just, and then in a Kimbo mode, you were obviously limited to close quarters only. It was, I mean, it was cool. It was a close range assault rifle, but it just, I don't know. It wasn't better than using another SMG or a shotgun. It was a cool idea for a gun, but ultimately kind of pointless. At number 113, the Infinite Warfare G-Rail. Now, this looked like something out of Doom as opposed to Call of Duty. I mean, so was it good? Not really. It depends on who you ask. If you charged it up, you could one-shot people from any distance, but that also required you to not shoot for a few seconds, which was a questionable decision. If you decided to spray it in semi-auto, it would kill in two to three shots, which was good, but the handling was closer to an LMG than an assault rifle. There's a few tweaks that could have been made to the G-Rail and make it a top-tier weapon, but for now, here it is. At number 112 today, the Modern Warfare 3 M4A1. This is possibly the worst M4 in COD history, which is saying a lot. It was heavily nerfed from Modern Warfare 2, which in itself had been nerfed from COD 4. The Modern Warfare 3 version was bouncy, it was weak, it was unreliable, and you would put it down for the second you unlocked it for something else. It was very clearly meant to be a starter weapon, which I get. You hardly ever see somebody beyond level 10 with it. It was way too unreliable, especially compared to other rifles in that game. At number 111. The Ghost SC-2010. I've said it before, this is the most forgettable weapon in Ghost, and I agree with that. Do you remember it? It fired at 750 rounds per minute, killed in 3-5 to five shots, didn't have any recoil. It was accurate. If you threw the grip attachment on there, the, the recoil was gone. So why wasn't it used more? Why wasn't it more memorable? Well, in a game like Ghost, the SC, well, it was weak. It killed in 3-5 to five shots, yes, but the fire rate was a lot lower than more popular Ghost guns, which brought the time to kill down a little below average. 
It wasn't bad. You could get work done. It just wasn't as strong or melty as the other go-to guns and ghosts. At number 110, the Modern Warfare 3 AK-47. Now, the AK was nerfed hard from MW1 and 2. It was viable, I guess, but it wasn't popular. It just didn't feel consistent anymore. Aside from the low fire rate and the high recoil, the AK's two-shot potential was heavily neutered. Most of the time, you, you were killing in four bullets, and that's kind of sacrilegious for an AK-47. It was just way too slow to keep up with other guns in MW3, and it looked cool. It just wasn't really good. At number 109, the Ghost MSBS. This gun fell victim to one of the fastest and heaviest nerfs in COD history. On launch day, the MSBS was game-breaking. It was one of the most powerful guns in COD history. It was. I mean, it was the COD 4M16, but with more attachments and perks. It was too good. But we're talking about the current version of the guns on the list, and it was nerfed, and you pretty much never saw it again. It was pretty powerful, and the damage was consistent, but the handling was so bad. It was bouncy, slow. The reload was longer than you would want. It had a hefty, fast fall from grace, and if you weren't playing Ghost during the launch week, you probably never experienced it. At number 108 today, the Black Ops 2 Type 25. It's a weird one to talk about. Very fast firing, had a fan club, but if you compare it to the Type 25 and when you compare it to other guns in Black Ops 2, it's easy to see why it was the least used. It wasn't bad, it was just hard to control, and once you got to mid-range where assault rifles are supposed to shine, you were getting hit markers everywhere. I know, some people really like the type for its close range stopping power, but the lack of versatility is why it's at number 108. At 107 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 AN-94. As you probably know, the AN-94 shoots the first few rounds faster, and then the rest, if you hit your shots with that burst, it's time to kill is insane. However, if you don't land those first shots on the burst, instead it deals normal damage, and it's a full auto version, which wasn't very good. The damage per shot was low, in order for you to get the most out of this gun, you have to hit those faster bullets first. I think mid-tier is a decent place for it. And yes, we are already in mid-tier category because when you get down to it, there aren't really a ton of bad assault rifles in COD. We got the bad ones out of the way, so everything moving forward is viable in one way or another. Just keep that in mind. At number 106 today, the Black Ops 3 LV-8 Basilisk. Now, a while back, I said this was the first assault rifle in BO3. I'm sticking with it. It has the highest fire rate of any rifle in the game. It kills in four to five shots, which sounds great, but the weird quirk of the gun was the fact that it had to be charged up. When you pulled the trigger, about a third of a second would go by before the bullets actually started flying out the, the gun, which meant it was literally impossible to tap fire or effectively rush with it since you couldn't react as fast as you could with other guns. Now the damage per second was insane, but the fire delay, it killed it. At number 105, the COD Ghost ARX-160. This is a very fast firing assault rifle with a bit of a low damage profile. It could deal as little as 17 damage per shot, which that's kind of embarrassing for an AR. But the fire rate made up for it. If you kept it to close quarters, that time to kill was decent. The recoil was heavy, but for some reason, the first few shots had super low recoil, which encouraged tap firing and burst firing. It was just a bit of a weird weapon, all things considered. At number 104 today. The COD 4 MP44. Do you even remember this gun? A lot of people hate the gun, and I agree it was pointless, but I kind of have a soft spot for it. It was a throwback gun, basically a worse version of the AK, and you couldn't put attachments on it. But the power of it was actually pretty impressive for the time, and the handling was better than you would expect. It was a very mixed bag. It was. So I think this is an appropriate spot, all things considered. I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was as bad as some people say it was, but it definitely wasn't good. At number 103. The Black Ops 1 FN Foul. Did anybody actually ever use this? I don't think I remember seeing it outside of Gun Game. Semi-auto rifle killing two bullets, but that wasn't guaranteed, and it kicked. It looked and sounded awesome, but the recoil pattern was frustrating to deal with, especially when the M14, which we'll talk about later, was also a two-shot kill with much easier recoil to control. The Black Ops 1 Foul wasn't a bad gun on its own, but compared to the rest of the BO1 sandbox, it was lower tier. At number 102 today, the Modern Warfare 2 M4A1, I've said it before, that it was underwhelming, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It was the definition of a starter weapon, which I understand. Simple, effective, easy to use, but outclassed by the guns you would unlock later in the game. That's how it's supposed to be. Yes, it fired quickly, it had a decent time to kill, but once you got some other rifles unlocked, you probably set it and forget it. And the final gun today, at number 101, Modern Warfare 2019's AK-47. I remember when Modern Warfare gameplay was first shown off and we thought the AK was going to be the meta pick. It was a decent gun, but nowhere near as good as we thought it would and probably not as good as it should have been. 
This Modern Warfare AK had too much recoil, and the handling, it was just way too frustrating for a gun that shoots this slow. Yes, the damage was fantastic, but everything around that damage was rough. At number 100, the Black Ops 3, Shiva. Now, I believe this is the slowest semi-auto rifle in COD history, but it has a decent fan club because of the insane damage potential. It had a pathetic fire rate cap of 257 rounds per minute, but it was almost always a two-shot kill. And then, if you were running high caliber back in Black Ops 3, it could actually be a one-shot kill to the head. I know that sounds crazy, but you have to remember, this was a jetpack game, and that fire rate was embarrassingly low for a semi-auto weapon. And I know some of you like this gun. I know some of you are going to argue and say this was a pretty low rank, but the precision and consistency required to use this gun reliably, it was just way too much for the average player. At number 99, the Black Ops 4 Vapor XKG. Now, of all the assault rifles in Black Ops 4, I think this is the one I have the least to say about. In a very, I mean, it was had very low recoil, pretty high fire rate, but it also had super low damage to balance it out. In a game that had a longer time to kill like BO4, I just feel like the Vapor was in a weird spot. A lot of people like the fire rate and handling, but the damage was too low to make it a popular pick, like the ICR and other laser beam weapons in that game. It was kind of just sitting there in the creative class menu, which is why it's just sitting here at number 99. At number 98, the Modern Warfare 3 Type 95. Now on launch day, it was overpowered, but after it was nerfed, you hardly ever saw it online. And we are doing current form of all these guns, not launch, okay? This three round burst rifle had two shot kill potential for a pretty impressive distance, but once you backed up to 25 meters, it struggled. The damage was good, but the recoil, it was high, and the hip fire spread was unforgiving, so you really had to be precise. On its own, the Type 95 was decent, but you barely saw it online due to the inability to keep up with the god tier automatics in Modern Warfare 3. At number 97, the COD Ghost Maverick. Who actually remembers this DLC rifle? Probably not a lot of you. It wasn't a bad gun, it was just forgettable. It dealt 50 base damage, which is impressive, but that dropped all the way down to 24, so you were definitely supposed to use the Maverick at close range, but even then, it was kind of a weird pick because the fire rate was only 650 rounds per minute. It was a weird gun. The close range damage was insane, but the fire rate was so low that using it at close range wasn't really smart. I mean, I feel number, I feel 97's a fair spot. At number 96, the Black Ops 4 SWAT RFT. This was the first DLC rifle in Black Ops 4, and yes, it was viable, but it was underwhelming. It was easy to control, the fire rate was solid, but the damage left something to be desired. If you wanted an accurate low damage weapon, here, take the ICR, right? It was the more practical choice in every way. The SWAT was perfectly usable, but when compared to the other guns at your disposal in the game, it wasn't the best option. At number 95, the Black Ops Cold War QBZ-83, an extremely mobile assault rifle. The time to kill wasn't very good, but the mobility, whew, that's what made it shine. You could move around easily with the QBZ, and even though that damage was low, the versatility made it a good support weapon. I could actually see this one getting a lot more popular if it just gets a tiny, tiny buff to that damage. It could definitely move into the meta. At number 94 today, the Infinite Warfare RVN. This was a two-round burst rifle that could be split in half and used as a melee weapon, which was an odd trait, but it was fun to goof around with. The damage was decent, the melee was always a one-hit kill, which is cool, and a lot of COD players had a soft spot for two-round burst weapons for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe something cool about the firing mode? But it was a good gun. I think it sits good here at number 94, and you probably forgot it even existed. At number 93 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 Kilo 141. Now, the Kilo is super popular in Warzone, but you don't see a whole lot of it in standard multiplayer because it's not the best, and we're doing multiplayer, not Warzone. The fire rate was decent, damage was decent, but it was outclassed. Plus, the Kilo shines in super long range fights in Warzone, but in 6v6 multiplayer, you don't have those options for the bigger fight. It's a good gun, but not nearly as good as its Warzone counterpart. At number 92, the Black Ops 2 SWAT 556. Do not come and argue in the comments that I put this too low. Three round burst, very consistent, very powerful, but it kind of became the laughing stock in the Black Ops 2 community because it was nowhere close to the power of the M8A1. There is a bit of a community for the SWAT, I know, because it's accurate and has good consistency, but when you put it next to other guns, it just can't keep up. At number 91, the Advanced Warfare STG-44. Now, like most STGs, the AW version is a very high damage weapon, but you'll have to deal some very high recoil to compensate. It was really good up close since the damage was so high and the fire rate was pretty decent, but if you took a step back, it wasn't going to get you very far. I think this is fair. At number 90, 
the COD World War II AS-44, the gun uh, that looked very similar to the AK-47, and in practice, it functioned mostly the same as well. It killed in three to five shots while firing relatively slow, but it kicked a decent amount too. In the context of COD World War II, it was a decent gun. It was viable, although it wasn't going to make you ride home to your mom about it. Not a whole lot to say, just another mid-tier assault rifle. I mean, I know this may be kind of a boring part of the video, but there's a lot of guns to get through. Don't worry, we're going to get to the really good stuff in the near future. At number 89, the COD Ghost Fad. Now, the Fad was way better in Ghost than MW3, but it still wasn't anything uh, stellar. Fired at 882 rounds per minute this time around, but at least in a game like this, it could kill in three bullets up to 20 meters. It actually had a worse three-shot kill range of all the rifles in Ghost, but it wasn't quite as weak as some of the others. Some people like the Fad. I see the appeal. I mean, in summary, the Ghost Fad was a lot better than Modern Warfare 3's version, but that's not saying a whole lot in the grand scheme of assault rifles in Call of Duty. At number 88, the Modern Warfare 2019 FN SCAR-17. Uh, a lot of people sleep on this gun in multiplayer. Fire rate is low and the, heat, the recoil is heavy, but if you hit your shots, it is a melt machine. You only need a few bullets to connect in order to drop your target, and the range is way better than you actually think, which allows you a ton of extra options on bigger maps. Now, I do think the SCAR needs a hefty buff in Warzone, where it's almost completely unviable, but in multiplayer, it's not bad. At number 87, the Black Ops 3 XR2. Now, it was underrated. It was, if you look at the stats. It's probably mid-tier. Three-round burst, had two-shot kill potential with high caliber, and that sounds good. But the problem is if you were hitting anywhere other than the upper body, it was getting you in trouble. Even at close range, the XR2 could get you three hit markers without killing the target, which is, fr <laughs> that's frustrating. Yes, if you're aiming high and hitting the upper body, it's a melt machine, but it took a lot of work to be super consistent with, and while that did take some extra skill, it was harder to use than other guns, so I docked it a few points. At number 86, the Modern Warfare 3 CM901. Now, I feel like I bring this gun up at least once a month, and whenever I do, people always reminisce with me about how underrated it was. Very high damage assault rifle, killed in two to four bullets, which made it one of the only automatic weapons in Modern Warfare 3 that could two-tag people, right? Fire rate, slow, recoil, high. Damage was nice, but I have to put it lower because, like I said, the recoil was hard to manage, and if we're being honest with each other, I love the gun, but it's just not going to be a top-tier gun. At number 85 today, the Infinite Warfare R3K. A three-round burst energy rifle that did have a good theoretical time to kill in practice, uh, but yeah. Burst was fast, but the burst delay is what got you in trouble, and the handling speeds were nothing to write home about. Yes, there was a handful of variants that people liked with the R3K, but in a jetpack game, a burst weapon that handled and fired this slowly, like I said, it's going to get you in trouble, especially when the target was probably just going to turn around and spray you with the MV4 or the K-Bar. At number 84, the COD World War II uh, Automaton. Automaton? I don't know. I, pfft, rifle that thrived at mid to long range. It was consistent three to four shot kill, manageable recoil. Fire rate, kind of low, 472 rounds per minute. I mean, rushing probably wasn't smart, but if you stay back and wanted to bully your enemies at range, it would get the job done. I, yeah, let's move on. Number 83, the Black Ops 3 Galil. I love the Galil because of Black Ops 1. In the Black Ops 3 version, it's decent. Nothing special, but decent. It killed in four to six shots most of the time. It fired in at even 750 rounds per minute, the exact same as its Black Ops 1 counterpart. It's mid-tier in the context of Black Ops 3, and I think mid-tier overall is a good COD assault rifle. At number 82, the Black Ops 4 Grav. This was the BO4 version of the Galil, which you probably know is one of my favorite guns in COD history because I just told you. This version fired noticeably slower than the other Galils, but the damage, it was good. It killed in four shots up close and six at range. The handling, it was pretty good. Movement? pretty good. It was a good weapon all around. Nowhere near as good as the Black Ops 1 Galil, but you probably knew that. And if I would have put it any higher, you would have said I was showing favorites. At number 81, the Black Ops 3 HVK 30. High rate of fire, accurate, tight hip fire spread. Kind of low damage. That's all you really need though. Even with the lower damage, it could still kill with full bullets from an impressive distance, which made it a good choice for rushing people and sticking close to mid-range. It wasn't as popular as other rifles in BO3, but it was viable. I got a lot of hours in with this. I felt really comfortable with this gun. I don't know why, but I did. At number 80, the Advanced Warfare AK-12. This one too. Despite it sharing a name with the gun and Ghost, it behaved differently. Instead of being a slow firing but hard hitting rifle, the AW version fired at 750 rounds per minute and killed in four to five shots. Now this sounds mediocre, but the benefit of the lower damage was the practically non-existent recoil. It was one of the most accurate guns in the game, which that's super beneficial in a game like Advanced Warfare where you have to account for a lot of vertical movement and your target changing directions on you. It wasn't amazing. 
I think the Ghost version's better. But the Advanced Warfare AK-12 was a solid gun. I would call it upper mid tier. At number 79, the Black Ops 4 Echo Hawk Dual Bore. Cool weapon. Double barrel assault rifle that allowed uh, for a lot of ammo at once. By default, it carried 44 rounds. And with the extended mags 1 and 2, you could have up to 74 rounds locked and loaded. I mean, the damage was pretty solid. It made it pretty cool for pressure and group fights. Time to kill. It wasn't a lead or anything, but it was, it was at, like I said, group fights. This thing was cool. At number 78, the Modern Warfare 2019 Foul. Now, when Modern Warfare launched, the Foul was hot garbage, but after a series of buffs, it's okay. Still a semi-auto gun in a game dominated by fast full autos, but the Foul's damage potential is nearly unmatched. If you aim high and stick close to mid-range, it is insane. And actually, out of all the guns, even the SMGs, it kills really fast. At range, it struggles due to the recoil and the ballistics, but at mid-range and closer, it's a monster. At number 77 today, the Modern Warfare 2 M16A4. Now, it was copy-pasted from COD 4 into Modern Warfare 2 pretty faithfully, so you know what you're getting. I mean, it was just outclassed this time by other guns. To be fair, Modern Warfare 2 was packed with ridiculous full-auto weapons, and there was even a superior burst rifle we'll talk about later. I mean, it was a good gun. Great time to kill. But when you put it next to everything else in that game, it's mid-tier in the grand scheme of things. It was strong, just not capable of keeping up with the rest of the sandbox of Modern Warfare 2. At number 76... The Black Ops Cold War Graza. Groza Graza. Excellent assault rifle. Super mobile, solid time to kill. Yes, there are other assault rifles in Cold War that get the job done better. It's not going to blow your socks off, but it was good. Very safe choice is what I like to call this one for almost every single map. I think number 76 is a fair spot. And guess what? G Fuel, Code Chaos, 30% off. They are launching new flavors left and right. Everything on the website, 30% off. Send me a picture if you take advantage. Link is at the top of the description. At number 75. What an insane list. The Black Ops 3 MX Garand. It was interesting. It was a futuristic version of the iconic M1 Garand. And in a game like BO3, the results were a little bit of a mixed bag. It killed in two shots most of the time. The fire rate was pretty high. However, you couldn't reload it mid-clip. So you, if you had two shots in the clip, you would either have to roll the dice on your next fight or just fire those two shots into a wall so you could reload and give your position away and hear that fantastic ping. The gun, it had fantastic damage potential, but the ammo situation in Black Ops 3, it wasn't the best. And also, guys, how have we done so far? It's not easy to rank this many guns. How do you think we've done so far on the first two parts? At number 74, the Modern Warfare 3 Scar L. Now, I think this is one of the most underrated scars in COD history. It had great fire rate, solid damage, very easy recoil to control, and a big 30-round mag. Most scars only had 20. At any range short of 25 meters, the scar would kill in three bullets. And those iron sights were as clean as they get. It was super underrated, and I think it deserves this spot. It actually probably could have been a little higher now that I'm looking at it, but we'll go with it. Remember, that doesn't necessarily mean these are bad right here. There's just a lot of weapons. At number 73, the Black Ops 2 MTAR. This was your starting rifle in Black Ops 2, and it was a very popular choice for myself included, even after people unlocked other guns. It was a little bouncy, but it had a great time to kill. It had really good iron sights and a very, very fast reload. It was a great gun for leveling up, and even after you got more stuff on your account, you would often find yourself going back to it because it was actually really fun to use, and it was a pretty solid rifle. At number 72 today, the Black Ops 1 M14. Now, if you're someone who likes semi-auto guns, you probably use the M14 a lot. The Black Ops 1 was one of the best in COD history thanks to that easy recoil pattern and the really, really high damage. It was almost always a two-shot kill, and since the fire rate cap was high and the recoil was easy to manage, it was versatile. Just pop somebody twice, and they're down. At number 71 today, the Black Ops 4 KN57. Now, I've always thought this gun sounded like a bunch of farts, but okay, it was pretty good. Well-rounded rifle, fit about any role you needed, and still had a pretty good time to kill in most situations. I really can't be the only one, though, who thought that firing sound was weird. I, I don't know why I'm stuck on that. I'm sorry, but yeah, let's move on. At number 70, how many of you remember the COD 4 G36C? It was a mixed bag. It was stronger than the M4, but it was also a little harder to control, all while firing at around the same rate. So, did you want a little more damage with a little more recoil? It's up to you. It had a fan club in COD 4, but it wasn't really my thing. I know some people figured out the secret sauce to make a god tier, and I should point out that it had a ton of potential, but actually taking advantage of that potential, that's up to you. At number 69, kind of pains me to put it this low, but here it is. 
the Advanced Warfare HBR A3. Now, most slow-firing weapons struggled during the jetpack era of COD, but this one was popular. It fired at 625 rounds per minute, but the first four rounds came out at 857, so you could actually master the timing and tap fire, you could melt people. Now, the damage was moderate. It killed in three shots up close and five at long range, and in a game as fast-paced as AW, a more slow-firing gun like this it should have been forgotten but it was one of the most used guns, and I'm not even going to get started on the Insanity variant. Woo! At number 68 today, the Black Ops 3 Man O' War. This was one of my favorite guns in the game. Sounded beefy, had the damage stats to back it up. It fired at just over 500 rounds per minute, but it had some of the best bullet damage in the entire game. It killed in three shots in most situations. The handling was slow, yes, and the recoil was high, but it was a fun gun to use. I think it was... More of a cool than good gun, but it was still a fan favorite, and I think number 68 is a fair spot. At number 67 today, the Black Ops Cold War Krig 6. Now, every COD game needs a resident laser beam. And it was somewhat low rate of fire, but basically Cold War's equivalent of the Kilo 141 from Modern Warfare. Super easy to control, excellent range. It was really good for mid to long range gunfights, and since it's super easy to control, you can make up, I mean, the relatively low damage per shot if you're good at it. At number 66 today, the Infinite Warfare X Eon. I bet you don't even remember this gun. It was interesting. It actually fired faster if you aimed down the sights, but if you hit fire, you'd be treated to this extremely tight spread at the cost of lower fire rate. Now, damage wise, the X Eon would kill in four to five shots. Pretty standard in Infinite Warfare, and the varying fire rate gave it a little bit of personality. It was popular. It was a good. Well, it, I say it was popular, but I don't remember it. Maybe it wasn't. It was viable. How's that? At number 65, the Modern Warfare 2019 AS Val. It was insane. In terms of time to kill, the gun had one of the best in the entire game, but that was balanced out by small magazines and atrocious ballistics. It was basically a glorified SMG, or SMG, but if you treated it that way, you'll be treated to one of the best melt machines in Modern Warfare. I put it a little lower than you'd probably expect because it lacked versatility, but it was a really good gun for close range maps. At number 64 today, the World at War STG-44, the one and only assault rifle in World at War. It was solid, fire rate was a little low, recoil was a little bouncy, but the damage, whew, it was spicy. It could kill in three to four bullets from most distances with stopping power, while the recoil made it harder to use at long range. It was a good gun. It was one of the most used in World at War. I don't remember the magazine size, but I don't think it was very big. At number 63, the Black Ops 3 Peacekeeper MK2. Now, the Peacekeeper was a fan favorite SMG in Black Ops 2. For some reason, Treyarch decided to make it an assault rifle when they brought it back for BO3. Okay, it would kill in four to five shots, had the best mobility of any assault rifle in the game, and Treyarch wanted to keep the spirit of the Peacekeeper intact and make it feel like an SMG slash AR hybrid, and I think they succeeded. Decent fire rate, decent damage, excellent handling, he made the Peacekeeper MK2 a fan favorite for those who managed to pull it from a supply job. Ouch. At number 62 today, the COD Ghost SA805. I think it was underrated. It would kill in three to four shots while firing at almost 800 rounds per minute, and it didn't kick a lot. The handling, yes, it was a tad slow, and the time to kill wasn't the best, but in the grand scheme of things, it was good in a game like Ghost. It wasn't going to blow your pants off, but it was a lot better than people actually realized. You never hear about it today, so here we are, giving it some love at number 62, which is right at the middle point. At number 61, the Black Ops Cold War Far 83. You're, you've probably seen this gun a lot, recently at least. Very good close range assault rifle. Struggles the more you move back and up close, it's time to kill is insane. One of the best in the game. But if you back up even just a little bit, you'll start seeing the problems. Stick to close quarters with this one. It will treat you well. But if you're going to try to use it at range, yeah, probably not. At number 60, the Advanced Warfare ARX-160. Now, unlike the Ghost Gun of the same name, this one was a three-round burst rifle with some really good potential. It had very low recoil and a great rate of fire, although this was balanced out with the scaling damage that actually, well, it made it lose its one burst potential beyond mid-range, which that's frustrating after all. Nothing is more annoying than landing all three shots in the burst but not getting the kill. The RX had a huge 45 round mag by default, which is good for constant pressure, and despite that range drop off, people loved it. At number 59 today, the Modern Warfare 3 MK14. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this gun is the strongest assault rifle in COD history. If we're talking about just sheer bullet damage, I think so. It hit for 75 base damage, and if you hit somebody in the head, it was actually capable of a one-shot kill. So why is it at number 59? 
Well, the recoil was high, so if you weren't pacing your shots, you would get in trouble. Even if you did pace your shots, you could struggle to stay on target. The gun was fun. I think it's one of the best semi-auto rifles in COD history, but if you compare it to everything else, you just have to rank it a little lower than I'd like to. At number 58, my baby, the Black Ops 1 Enfield. Now, I know a lot of you hate this gun. I loved it. And if you look at the stats, it's not that bad. Here we go. It's viable, just not as good as some of the other BO1 games. It was your starting assault rifle. It fired at 750 rounds per minute, killed in three to four bullets. When you look at the damage in the fire rate, it was exactly the same as the Galil and the Commando. But what made the infill so unpopular was the worst range and the more horizontal recoil. So sure, it was, I mean, it was killing as fast as some of the best guns in the game, but the handling was a lot harder to get used to, which, well, made the others more popular. But all that being said, the infill was a good, fun gun. And if you stuck to close to mid-range... You liked it. I loved it. At number 57, the Black Ops 4 Peacekeeper. Now, if you know the Peacekeeper, you know what to expect. Pretty similar to the BO3 version in the sense that it was a rifle this time around instead of an SMG, but still had that happy middle ground between AR and SMG. Decent damage, low recoil, but solid range and quick handling to make up for that time to kill. It's hard to find anyone in the COD community who doesn't like the Peacekeeper. At number 56 today, the Black Ops Cold War FFAR1. <laughs> it used to be one of the best guns in the game, arguably number one. But after a series of nerfs, it's been in much more of a balanced state. It's still a high tier weapon, and that fire rate makes it super versatile, but it's not as much of a close range juggernaut anymore due to that handling. Still a good gun, not as good as it once was. And remember, we go off the current build and status of the gun, not at launch. At number 55 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 Graw 556. I mean, it's a pretty solid competitor to the M4A1, but with some key differences. The M4, it was more versatile, had better close range power. The Gra, far more consistent at long range, thanks to the extremely good ballistics and virtually non-existent recoil. You could laser people from across the map with this thing, so yes, the M4 may be better at close range. The Gra takes the cake at longer ranges while still maintaining a lot of the M4's other strengths like handling speed and ease of use. At number 54. The Black Ops 4 AN-94. Now, it seems like the AN-94 will never get up to where it was in Black Ops 2. The O4 version, it's good. Better than the other ones we've talked about. But the Black Ops 2 version, come on. Now, this one would kill in five to six shots. Although a buff later improved that to four. Like the other AN-94s, you really need to hit those first few shots. Because after that initial burst, the fire rate slows down to an insane degree. So, if you hit the first few shots, the time to kill is great. But if you miss those first few shots and let the fire rate slow down, you could get in some trouble. At number 53 today, the Modern Warfare 2 TAR-21. I liked the gun. It had a big fan club. It was a moderate damage assault rifle, great rate of fire, but had some nasty recoil. It actually had some of the highest recoil of any rifle in Modern Warfare 2, but that damage potential, it, 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 it gravitated you toward it. It killed in two to three bullets with stopping power. It fired at over 750 rounds per minute. Plus, it had clean iron sights, so you could throw on other attachments and not worry about that optic. Yes, it was tough to control. It was a bit of an underdog pick. If you knew what you were doing, it was devastating. At number 52 today, the Advanced Warfare IMR. Now, I've made a habit of saying this gun was underrated, and I stick with it. Four-round burst, extremely similar to the fan favorite M8A1. The fire rate, it was good. Damage was good. Reload was quick. The movement in Advanced Warfare really... That's what held the gun back, as burst weapons were tough to use in a game with so much vertical combat, but the IMR, it was still totally capable of keeping up if you put the time into getting good with it. And the last one today, at number 51, the COD World War II Volksturm Gewehr. Uh, I probably butchered that. One of the first DLC rifles in the game. It was a pretty fast firing gun. Recoil pattern people fell in love with. If you aimed at the chest, the recoil would pop you up to the head, which is perfect, like an AK-47. If you were hitting limb shots, it was a bit of a hit marker machine, but if you were hitting upper chest, it was insane and it was a very popular pick. Hit your shots and it would reward you. Modern Warfare 2019 CR 56 AMAX. Now, you've surely been seeing a lot of this gun in Warzone, but what about multiplayer? Ground rules, guys. We're going with multiplayer and we're going the current state of the gun, not at launch, okay? Still pretty good. Solid slow firing, but hard hitting assault rifle that's pretty easy to control and not hard to kit. I've said a couple times in videos, uh, before that the CR-56 is basically just a better version of the AK-47 and I stand by that. It's everything the Modern Warfare AK should have been. I'm sorry, I had to. Also guys, do me a favor. Join the Team Chaos Discord. We are on our way to 4,000 members over there. People talking every day, new friendships made. We talk about Call of Duty, we talk about gaming, uh, we talk about everything. And I try to be in there almost every single day. The link is at the top of the description. 
At number 49, the Black Ops 3 FFAR. This is a futuristic FAMAS, and it was pretty fun to mess around with when it was first added to supply drops. Overall, it's a good gun. If you use the Black Ops 1 FAMAS, you're probably going to feel right at home, although Treyarch obviously had to rebalance the damage for Black Ops 3 so it wouldn't be completely broken. The FFAR is a great assault rifle. Close, mid-range, it's a monster. If you can handle the recoil, it's solid. At number 48 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 FR556. People hate this gun in Warzone, and that often makes them overlook the multiplayer version, which is actually good. Total melt machine in multiplayer, decreased health, closer engagements, recipe for success. At mid-range, it's strong. The time to kill is one of the best in the entire game. At close range, it struggles. At long range, a little inconsistent, but the mid-range sweet spot, the FR556 is really good. It's worth another look if you put it down. At number 47, the Black Ops 3 M14. Now, BO3 is one of the only COD games that did launch with a proper semi-auto rifle, aside from, I guess you could say, the Shiva, but even then, it wasn't really a conventional semi-auto. In June of 2018, almost three years after BO3 launched, Treyarch added the M14 to supply drops, and it was good. It was a consistent two-shot kill and had a much higher fire rate cap than the other semi-autos in the game, which made that time to kill good. Recoil was a little high, but for a jetpack semi-auto rifle, it was pretty good. At number, how many times I say good there? At number 46, the Modern Warfare 3 G36C. The main competitor, the infamous ACR in Modern Warfare 3, wasn't nearly as popular, but it was good. It wasn't as good, though. It had a lot of people running it. A lot of people ran it, though. It was slightly higher fire rate than the ACR, but in exchange, slightly lower damage. Time to kill was still pretty good. The recoil was pretty easy to manage. And to top it all off, this rifle had one of my favorite reload animations in COD history. It was just a really, really solid gun, and I hope we get the G36C back in COD sometime in the future. I know it was a hidden gun in the Modern Warfare 2019, but that's not the same. Bring back the G36C. At number 45 today, the Modern Warfare 2 AK-47. Probably one of the most forgotten AKs. I've said it a couple times. It, it was a tad underwhelming, and I, I think it's the case, but it's not bad. It's actually quite the opposite. It was the last rifle you unlocked. It had some pretty impressive power if you could control that recoil. It killed in two to three bullets most of the time, and the reload was very quick. Now, the recoil was the issue, but at close to mid-range, that time to kill was fantastic, and it didn't kick too much. So you, you, could track very, you could track with it. I like the gun. We have to be fair, but I think this is a fair spot. At number 44, the Black Ops Cold War XM4. Now, to quote my good friend Drifter, the XM4 doesn't do any one thing super amazingly, but... It does practically everything above average, making it the most versatile gun in COD history. One of the most versatile. It's not a crazy melt machine or anything, game-breaking like that, but the XM4 can be kitted out for pretty much any situation. Close range, long range, stealth aggression, the XM4 can get it done. Yes, it, well, it, it's not, it's not going to be a top-tier one category, but it's so practical across the board, that's why I got such a high spot. At number 43, the Black Ops 4 Rampart, Rampart 17. Essentially, another Scar H, and a lot of people loved it for that. Slower fire rate, heftier recoil, way better damage. If you aimed high and hit your shots, it was one of the best time to kill in all of Black Ops 4. It wasn't easy to use effectively, but the potential was there, and a lot of people made it work because they got good. At number 42, the Black Ops 3 ICR-1. This was the resident laser beam of BO3. It reminded me a lot of the M27, which was probably intentional because it even had the same awesome reload animation. The ICR-1 had a moderate rate of fire, somewhat low damage, but almost no recoil to speak of, which made it super easy to laser people across the map, and in hardcore modes, you already know. Even in normal core modes, it was viable because of how easy it was to use, and yes, the damage was low. Fire rate was high enough, though, to keep that time to kill competitive. It was a fan-favorite weapon. It was made even better in Black Ops 4, although we'll talk about that one soon. At number 41 today, the COD Ghost AK-12, one of the most underrated rifles in Ghost. It fired at 700 rounds per minute, killed in two to four bullets, made it one of the strongest guns in the game. So why was it underrated, you may ask? Well, a lot of people passed on it because of the recoil. It wasn't actually that heavy, but it was awkward directional recoil. It made it difficult to use at range. But if you could get the recoil pattern down, you could dominate with the gun. You could. At number 40, the COD 4 G3. I think this is one of the most underrated semi-auto guns in COD history. It could drop enemies with two bullets. You heard me right, two bullets, no recoil, no fire rate cap. You could spam it, spam it as hard as you wanted to without losing any power or control. So why wasn't it more popular? Well, COD 4 was a fast-paced game. A lot of people didn't want to use a uh, semi-auto weapon, but it was still a great gun. At number 39, 
the Black Ops 1 M16. This is one of my favorite M16s in COD history, and it was the version of your starting assault rifle. It wasn't quite as good as a lot of people remember, but it was powerful. The M16 fired rather quickly. It killed in three bullets up close and four bullets at range. This meant you could one burst people pretty consistently, but once you hit a certain point, you would have to fire at least two bursts to drop someone, and that's where you got in trouble. I like the gun. I think it was super fun to use, but we're trying to be as honest as we can with these ranking videos. At number 38, the Modern Warfare 2 Foul. This gun was way better than people realized. Ah, man. Semi-auto monster, no recoil, no fire rate cap, killed in two bullets for most ranges with stopping power. Now, yes, the reload animation was a little long. You have to remember, it wasn't going to be as good as a full auto weapon in a game like Modern Warfare 2. It was a beast, though. Make sure you have a good trigger, trigger finger. I mean, in a game this fast-paced, you really had to be good with it to make it work. At number 37, the Black Ops Cold War AK-47. This thing had so much potential that pros actually had a gentleman's agreement to not use it in tournaments. It fired pretty fast for an AK while still maintaining that insane damage potential. And this time around, you had the gunsmith. Yep, you could make the handling and recoil even better. The Cold War AK is pretty nuts, and I'd be shocked if it's not nerfed soon. At number 36 today, the Modern Warfare Remastered Boss 14. When it was added, the community was pissed. Not only was it another DLC rifle being added to Modern Warfare Remastered, but this, it was strong. Heck, it's still strong today. The fire rate was fantastic. The damage was high and the recoil was a little bouncy, but if you controlled it, it was game on. I'm still not happy about DLC weapons being added to MW3, but here it is. At number 35 today, the Black Ops 4 ICR-7, perhaps the easiest gun in COD history to control. Had a moderate fire rate, decent damage, zero recoil. By default, the recoil is none. If you put on grip attachments, you literally have negative none, if that's even a thing. It's a laser beam. Obviously, the accuracy is balanced out with a slow time to kill, but it didn't matter. At number 34 today, the COD Ghost Remington R5. Woo, what a gun. It wasn't as good or popular as some of the other guns in Ghost, but man, people... They got work done. 631 rounds per minute, a bit on the slow side, but it hit like a freaking Mack truck. It dealt 48 base damage for 40 meters, meaning it was a two-shot kill as long as you hit one headshot. And any full-auto gun that can two-tap from that distance, yeah. It's also very easy to control, which is odd. Usually a gun that hits that hard will have some hefty recoil, but the Remington was smooth. I love the gun. It's probably the second most used rifle in COD Ghost after the Honey Badger. At number 33... The Black Ops 3 KN44, despite being the first rifle you grabbed, it was a beast. Super versatile, de I mean, deceptively good range. It was, it, was, it was consistent. Killed in three to four bullets. It wasn't going to outgun any of the SMGs at close range, but at mid to long, it was one of the best automatic weapons in the game. It was consistent. Plus the fact you got it at level one, people. At number 32, the Modern Warfare Remastered XM LAR. This was the first DLC rifle added to Modern Warfare Remaster. When it came out, it caused a bit of a stir. It was a tad bit too good. Full auto rifle, super low recoil, two shot killing power, stopping power. And I know COD 4 had a fast time to kill, but the XM, uh, uh, probably a little too much. Overpowered, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Spammy and annoying. Absolutely. Yeah. At number 31, the COD 4 M4 Carbine, the original M4 in COD history. It was a laser beam. It was a tad on the weak side in terms of bullet damage, but that fire rate was there. And the recoil, there, well, there's nothing to talk about. It was versatile. It wasn't statistically amazing or anything like that, but a lot of people loved it for its easy handling and melty potential if you hit your shots, which was not hard to do. At number 30, the COD World War II STG-44. This gun was spammed to the point the community started calling it the Sweaty Try Hard Gun 44. Seriously, compared to other guns in COD World War II, it just felt like a more traditional COD gun. Fast, versatile, punchy, aggressive. Arguably the best STG we've ever got. I'll let you guys decide. It's very likely we'll be seeing this gun again later in this year at COD 2021, so we'll see what Sledgehammer does. At number 29 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 M13. This is one of my favorite Modern Warfare weapons. Low damage, but extremely fast firing assault rifle. It really gets work done. It's a stealth weapon. Nice middle of the ground or road, ground, whatever, between an assault rifle and an SMG. It was easy to control. And yes, you probably get a few more hit markers than other guns on this list, but the fire rate and the damage multipliers, it got it done. At number 28 today, the Modern Warfare 2019 Ram 7. Very similar to the M13, so here they are together. Fire rates are almost nearly identical, and while the Ram kicks a little more, it also hits harder, which gave it a better time to kill if you were willing to put in the work with the recoil pattern. If you could get the handling down, 
it was fantastic for an AR at close range, even mid-range. I mean, if you aim high, I love the gun since it was first added to the game, and I'm happy that we're giving it appreciation. At number 27 today, the Infinite Warfare OSA, the OSA. Now, this gun was actually banned from competitive play due to how insanely fast it, <laughs> it killed. Classic weapon with a built-in noob tube, although nobody used that because it was crap, thankfully. Instead, people took advantage of the great fire rate and the solid damage, which gave it one of the best time to kills in IW. I believe it was nerfed once or twice, and it was banned entirely from competitive play. If you were playing back in the day, you probably remember the OSA. And the final gun today, at number 26, the Black Ops 1 G11. One of the most underrated burst guns in COD history was an experimental rifle that had some of the best time to kill values in the game, although it didn't get used much because it was hard to unlock and it was just awkward. It would kill in three bullets from stupid ranges. The burst was firing at over 1,200 rounds per minute, which is just dumb, and the default mag size was 48 rounds. It was way better than some people realized back in the day, and it may be a tad controversial to rank it this high, but I'm doing it. And number 25, the Infinite Warfare K-Bar 32. Second most used assault rifle in IW, I do believe. It's fast firing rifle, moderate damage, some recoil, but you had to get used to it. Doesn't matter. You can stay on target. It was it was beastly. It was definitely one of it was one of the best guns for competitive play. It wasn't spam quite as hard as the MV4 due to the hefty recoil, but it was a fantastic choice and one of the most used in the game. Everything from this point on is just legacy. At number 24. The Black Ops 3 M8A7. This was also one of the most used guns in the game for competitive play. It was a slightly reworked version of the fan favorite M8A1 from Black Ops 2. This one fired just ever so slower than its older brother. It kicked a lot less though. The damage was slightly reworked, so you still required to be accurate with the gun, but it was capable of a one burst kill. It was definitely a step backwards from the original, but that doesn't mean it was bad at all. The gun slapped, and I definitely think it belongs in the upper half of this video. At number 23, this may be a hot take, I don't care. The Black Ops 1 AUG. It was meant to be the rival gun to the FAMAS, but most people will tell you the AUG was the weaker of the two. In terms of fire rate and time to kill, it was actually identical to the FAMAS, but the recoil pattern was more side to side, whereas the FAMAS was vertical. So if you spend any time playing COD, you know, side to side recoil patterns are the worst thing ever. So even though the AUG had some great time to kill, it was getting a lower spot just because of that recoil. It wasn't as easy to take advantage of. At number 22, the Black Ops 2 M27, one of my favorite guns ever. It had that trademark low damage, but super low recoil. It was one of those guns that was just good all around. Fire rate was good, damage was decent, recoil was non-existent. Made it a perfect gun for lasering people across the map. Plus, the fire rate made it strong enough to challenge people at close range. So, you didn't have to worry about people rushing you. It was excellent. It was one of the smoothest guns in COD history. At number 21... The Ghost Honey Badger, easily the most popular rifle in the game. It was a lot of people's favorite, uh, part of Ghost altogether. Suppressed assault rifle, great for aggressive and keeping off the radar. The damage was a little inconsistent. It killed anywhere from two bullets to five, but the high rate of fire and easy recoil, check mark. I mean, it was super good. It was. A lot of people ran it exclusively. Do I think it was top tier compared to every other COD rifle? No. What is it, high tier? Absolutely. At number 20, the Black Ops 1 AK-47. A lot of people, including myself, cite this as their favorite AK in COD history. Yep. I mean, it fired at 750 rounds per minute, one of the fastest AKs in COD. It killed in three to four bullets consistently. Now, when compared to other Black Ops 1 assault rifles, it was identical in time to kill. But the recoil pattern, and it was vertical, and it didn't kick a lot. So you aim chest, and it went all the way through the head. And running this gun with a suppressor sounded awesome, so that's a bonus. At number 19, the Black Ops 1 Commando. Almost identical to the AK in terms of fire rate and time to kill, but it gets a slight edge because of the handling. The Commando handled a tad faster than the AK while still keeping those great damage stats, which made it a little more versatile. Some people preferred the vertical recoil coil pattern of the AK, but a lot of people preferred the faster handling of the Commando, and I, I think it's barely, just barely a better gun. At number 18 today, the Modern Warfare Remastered Link CQ300. It was a remake of the fan favorite Honey Badger, some say it was better. The Lynx had an amazing time to kill. The recoil was really easy to control. It did not have that built-in suppressor like the Badger, but it had a noticeably faster time to kill. It was more, more than capable of keeping up with other rifles in COD 4, right? Well, Modern Warfare Remastered. In a little bonus, you got a really cool reload animation. At number 17, the Infinite Warfare NV4. 
Easily one of the most spam guns in COD history. It was a futuristic M4A1, but with slightly slower fire rates and practically no recoil. It was also the first gun you got your hands on. <laughs> in terms of stats and time to kill, it wasn't special, but it was so easy to use. It was by far the most used gun in the game. At number 16, the Advanced Warfare BAL-27. Yep, if it was... Uh, we wouldn't get started. First gun you get your hands on, far and away the best in the gun. Come on, our game, even after multiple nerfs. Fast, reliable, consistent, versatile. It was too good. We all know it. The variants just made it even better. There's a reason people called this game Battle of Duty, and I'm scratching my head as to why Sledgehammer never nerfed it further than they did. You could, you could, you could go boot up AW right now, and everybody's using a bow. At number 15, the Black Ops 2 AN94. Here it is. One of the last guns you unlocked in Black Ops 2, and it was worth the wait. It was a final unlock, and that's how it's supposed to be. It's the best. At the same time to kill, handling speed solid, no recoil, lots of attachments. It was awesome, and it sounded awesome in the reloads. Everything was awesome about it. The A94 is awesome. At number 14, hot take. Modern Warfare 2 Scar H. Everybody likes this Scar. A lot of people, the Modern Warfare 2 version was the best we ever got. The magazine was small, so I'll have to knock a few points off, but the iron sights, the recoil pattern, the fire rate, the sheer power, check marks. It was a little frustrating that in Modern Warfare 2, Scavenger and Sleight of Hand were in the same perk category, so if you were going to use the Scar, you were stuck with a slow reload, or you were constantly running out of ammo, but it was statistically a great gun. At number 13, the Black Ops 4 Maddox RFB, one of the most spam guns in that game, very versatile bullpup assault rifle with some of the best time to kill values in the entire game. Easy to control, super versatile, one of the go-to weapons for competitive play, and pub stomping. I don't think many people are going to argue with me on this when I say it was the best AR in Black Ops 4. At number 12, the COD 4 AK-47. Now, uh, you can debate back and forth which was better, the Black Ops 1 or COD 4. This one was powerful, killed in two bullets, I mean, with stopping power. Recoil, all vertical just like the Black Ops 1 version, made it easier to control. It did have a few weird quirks with the attachments that made certain ones less helpful than they should have been, but... It was really, really good. At number 11, I'm trying to be fair here, the Black Ops 1 Galil. I loved it, and a lot of people did as well. Solid fire rate, fantastic damage, but what made it better than other assault rifles in Black Ops 1 was the handling. Recoil, easy to control, handling was snappy, and it had one of the biggest default mags in the game. It's one of my favorite guns in COD history. I think it deserves a spot up here. I know I'm probably biased, but I think some of you will defend me on this. At number 10, the Black Ops 3 M16. Now, you may not believe it, but this one is actually, well, it has one of the best time to kills in COD history. I'm serious. In terms of handling and appearance, it's pretty close to the Black Ops 1 version, but the damage in the range was cranked up. It could one-burst people from any distance in BO3, and the recoil, is it's not there. Most burst weapons in COD history struggle at long range, but this one, it shined. It did. If you were lucky enough to get it out of a supply drop, you knew how busted it was. At number 9, another hot take. The Black Ops 2 Scar H. I think this is the best Scar in COD history. I do. I, I, I think a lot of people slept on it. Iron sights were clean, super low recoil, moderate fire rate, and damage was through the roof. It was super versatile and super strong. Despite being overshadowed by other rifles in Black Ops 2, it was top tier and more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys. And I know some of you are going to argue and say the AN-94 wasn't better than the Scar. No, I don't think it was. At number eight, the Black Ops 2 M8A1, the first four round burst in COD history and a lot of players insist it was the best fantastic fire rate despite being a four round burst it only needed three bullets to connect who would have thought fast mobile consistent reliable it was a fan favorite weapon and I don't think anybody's gonna be upset with this one either I, I remember these are all god guns now at number seven the modern warfare 2019 m4a1 it may be the most spam gun in COD history blatantly overpowered on launch day Stayed that way for a long time. Eventually, if any award nerfed it a bunch of times, but even today, it's still powerful. It's still versatile. It is. It is the best assault rifle in Modern Warfare, and I think it's a top 10 rifle all around. At number six, now it's going to get spicy. The Modern Warfare 2 ACR. One of my favorite guns. It's freak of nature. You look at the stats, it wasn't anything special, but once you played with it, you knew it. The damage was low. It needed four to five shots to kill without stopping power, but... I mean, well, that, that's a lot for a game like Modern Warfare 2, but if you threw on stopping power, it became a two to four shot kill. It was so easy to use. There was no recoil. It was a laser beam. And that ease of use made it one of the most popular guns in the game. Some called it overpowered. I'm not going to make that definitive statement either way. It was just really, 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 really good. Now we've reached the top five. 
The Black Ops 2 Foul OSW, the gun that was so good that Treyarch flat out banned it from competitive play after nerfing it. A semi-auto rifle, killed in two bullets, zero recoil, super fast handling, type hip fire spread. I mean, do I need to say any more? Honestly, it was game breaking and despite being a semi-auto, it had no problem keeping up with the big boys of COD history. At number four, <laughs> I'm about to get roasted. The Modern Warfare 3 ACR 6.8. Now, depending on who you ask, it was either really good or completely game breaking. This gun dominated Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer, and it's not hard to see why. It fired slower than its Modern Warfare 2 counterpart, but it hit dramatically harder. It did. It was capable of killing with two bullets, which is a rarity in Modern Warfare 2. It also had no recoil, which made it one of the most spammiest guns in the game alongside being a top tier weapon. Now, I know you guys are going to come at me and say you can't put the Modern Warfare 3 version over the Modern Warfare 2, but if you dig into them, I can and I did. At number three, the Black Ops 3 FAMAS. I don't even know what to say besides we already know it sounds like it's spitting hot metal, right? It's an SMG and an AR's body, control the recoil, it's done. Fired at nine, over 900 rounds per minute, killed in a maximum of four bullets. It, the recoil was vertical, you could do it. It, it, come on, I, I don't even need to go any, I don't need to defend myself here. At number two today, are you ready? The COD 4M16A4. You knew it was going to be up here. The original OP gun in COD, and the M16 was a three round burst. It only needed two bullets to connect in order to send your target back to the lobby. And that burst was firing over 900 rounds per minute, which gave it one of the best times to kill the entire franchise. It was spammed even harder in Modern Warfare Remastered, which gave it even more of a bad reputation. But here it is. And now we have reached number one out of 127, and this is the most probably, uh, this is probably the biggest hot take pick I've ever done. But I'm going to do it. Are you ready? Do you remember the one gun that has not been mentioned? The Modern Warfare 2 FAMAS. Yep, hear me out, okay? It was basically the COD 4M16, but even better thanks to the tweak fire rate and the addition of more perks and attachments. This FAMAS. You could drop people in two bullets from almost any distance. I mean, you didn't have to move at all when you pulled the trigger, and the fire rate was super high for a burst weapon. It was insane. Not nearly enough people talk about it. Not nearly enough people rank it high enough. So here it is. The best assault rifle in COD history. Let me know where you agree. Let me know where you disagree. Thank you for coming along on the journey. Let me know what ranking series you would like to see next. I'll see you soon.